everyone and welcome back to my booktube channel Lisa in Bookland. Today I'm here to bring you a video about what I would call my priority reads for the rest of 2022. Because I only make one video a week and unfortunately that's all I can commit to at the moment. I don't make like monthly TBRs apart from for like major readathons I intend to spend more or less a whole month reading uh, for that readathon like Jane Austen July or the Irish readathon. But I did make a video like this for Victorian classics that I wanted to read like one a month a few months back and I actually really enjoy having that as just kind of I suppose a structure to follow with what books I am going to read so I didn't want to make something that rigid that, that, that I would define which books I wanted to read in which months but I suppose I had a look at my bookshelves and I just decided what books I kind of wanted to target uh, for the rest for the last I suppose by the time September is over the last three months of the year. There's various reasons for this like some of them have been been on my shelf for a long time or some of them I some of them I just want to read them this year because of an anniversary or something and then some I just thought I'd just add to the list because they might just get left out otherwise in the midst of so many other books uh, being on my shelves. That's the idea of this video. So to start off with I suppose I'll start off with the ones that I'd say are the highest priority so the ones I kind of want to read this year because it's this year like do you know um because it's 2022. First one would be uh this one which is actually a new release uh The Handover Dublin Castle and the British Withdrawal from Ireland 1922 uh by John Gibney and Kate O'Malley. Um so this is obviously a non-fiction um it's exactly what it says in the tin so Dublin Castle um it's not actually a castle it's kind of a series of administrative buildings it was the heart of the British administration in Ireland after uh, the Anglo-Irish Treaty was signed the British administration withdrew from Dublin Castle it was handed over that was kind of the first in a series of many many things being handed over like military barracks and things like that so I just wanted to read this book yeah just before we get to the end of this kind of year 1922 when all of these handovers did happen um it just has like loads of pictures and documents and things so i just it'll be quite a quick read it describes the role of dublin castle during uh, the revolution the handing over also kind of handovers throughout the rest of the british empire in the years after that and kind of symbolism since so um yeah i just think it'll be an interesting little read and uh you know there are some really great pictures in here so uh I'm sure I'll enjoy looking at those. The next one then is also for 100th anniversary and it's a definitely more of an intimidating read and that is a book that I know a lot of people have read this year but I haven't yet and that's Ulysses by James Joyce. Um, I haven't read this yet. I got this, I think it was last Christmas. I did read the like first chapter around and um, I found it okay. Like I mean I never studied classics at school or anything and I know very little about the classics. I mean like you know the Romans and Greeks and that and I think there's a lot of stuff that probably went over my head but to be honest I'd be happy if I read this and just understood the like surface level story. I, I've not read any kind of postmodern fiction kind of stuff like uh, Virginia Woolf or anything I've never verged into that territory. But um, yeah, this is a very famous Irish book, obviously, and it tells the story of uh, Stephen Dedalus and um, Leopold Bloom. And it's just they walk around Dublin for a day and I think it's about like the people they meet. The day on which this book takes place is the 16th of June and that's celebrated every year in Dublin as Bloomsday. So I've never been in Dublin on Bloomsday but I really think if I say I like to read and I'm Irish, I probably should at least attempt Ulysses. Um, but yeah, I like Ulysses. I know that's some kind of mythical figure. I don't even know what Ulysses is. So forgive my ignorance. Um, this edition doesn't have any notes, which is not great, but um, I know that there's probably videos and stuff on YouTube trying to decode these things. But um, I think the thing is that every chapter is kind of told in a different style. Like I see there's like music, uh, the sheet music in the middle of this uh, song and then uh, this part seems to be written as a play. So sure look I'll attempt anyways and um, at least I'll have said I've tried so 
yeah, that's Ulysses. I, I don't think I'll be up for reading this in September or like October would be October, so I'll probably have enough kind of classics reading in October. So November, December time, um, I probably will read it quite slowly. I don't know if anybody could read Ulysses by itself unless you were very excited about Ulysses. So I'll report back on how I get on. So the next book I want to get to has been on my TBR for quite a while. It says in the inside cover that I bought it in 2015. So it's been on my shelf since then and it's definitely time to get to it especially as it's a classic by such a well-known author and um, so it's Claudine at School by Colette and it was translated by Jeanette Flanner. I understand it starts with this girl called Colette when she's 15 at a school I believe it's a boarding school just from a blurb I think there might be some LGBT representation in this so um, I'd be curious to know how that's handled. Um, I think it's like a coming of age story so It'll be an interesting one at least to have read something by Colette. Um, I never did catch that uh, that, that film with Keira Knightley about the author um, but I know there's a good bit of controversy over the author trying to get recognised over her husband as well so um, yeah I think it'll be quite a feminist book so we'll have we'll have a try of that anyways. I suppose the ideal time to read this would be September um, but like with Shake Timber and Tudor Timber on I don't know if I'll get to it but um, yeah we'll see. So another book that's been on my shelf for a while and I don't know how it survived this long I, I really should have read it by now um, especially I had a big appetite to read this book after I read Valley and Gentlemen which was, I really really enjoyed found so interesting and it was about the same figure. So the book that I'm talking about is The Dream of the Celt by Mario Vargas Llosa and I think it was translated by Edith Grossman. Glosa is a Peruvian author. So this book actually has an interesting uh, timeline, I suppose. It starts off in 1916 when uh, Roger Casement is awaiting execution. He was caught while he was attempting to import arms for the Irish Volunteers for the 1916 Rising. Uh, and then it looks back to his career as a British diplomat in the Amazon and the Congo, where he, where he did do really interesting, really important things. And also, I think this will deal with his life as a gay man, and he was really discredited at the end by these uh, diaries being published, the Black Diaries, um, which reveal his, revealed his homosexuality and to this day it's unknown whether they were true or fabricated to discredit him. So um, yeah, I just really, really enjoyed Valiant Gentlemen. I, I can't wait to see what, uh, what this book will think differently. So the next two books I've kind of selected because they remind me of either autumn or winter. Um, I wouldn't be a massive seasonal reader, but I suppose just when I was looking at my bookshelf, these two did stick out at me at once that I'd like to read at this time of the year. So the first one maybe uh, you know I'm not a huge lover of Halloween uh, controversial but no it wouldn't it wouldn't be my favorite uh, holiday at all um but I suppose it is nice on Halloween night to read something a little bit scarier I one one year I read the shining this year maybe this one uh, the resurrectionist by James Bradley which has a horrid sticker mark on the front it looks like it's right up my street even if a little bit creepier than I'd be used to. Uh, but it says, leaving behind his father's tragic failures, Gabriel Swift arrives in London in 1826 to study with Edwin Cole, the great anatomist. It's not quite set in the Victorian era, it's the end of the Georgian era, um, but like it sounds like there might be quite gruesome with uh, with dissecting and things. So um, that cover definitely caught my attention and the title The Resurrectionist it might be quite eerie. Pulled into the sinister and mysterious underworld of Georgian London, a classically claustrophobic gothic chiller. So yeah, I haven't heard anything about this, so we'll see what it's like. So the next one then is another new release, and that is The Great Passion by James Runcie. Because it's a new release, I suppose it is nice to read them, especially when I buy them in hardback uh, in the year that they come out. When I was in college, I sang in the University Choral Society, which I really, really liked. So November, I'll always think of just, it used to be like our end of term concert around the 27th, 28th of November. Because it was a choral society, we like, sang with an orchestra and soloists and things and we just sing classic choral works like Requiems or you know um, Handel's Messiah we sang so I really really enjoyed that. We used to dress in gowns um, which was always a highlight as well but I digress this book is about the writing of St Matthew's Passion by Bach in 1726 and it's uh, told from the perspective of a young chorister. Controversial Bach wouldn't be like my favourite composer but um, it's been a while since I've read a book that was really kind of about music and it's something I really enjoy so um, yeah no, I'll be looking forward to getting to this one uh, once the nights start getting longer. 
I suppose it's soul meet the end. The best example of the genre I've come across since the crime set, any cool music. I loved any cool music a few years ago. So um, yeah, no, can't wait to read this one. So the last two books then are much more random. They're just two ones that, you know, sometimes you have books that you're really looking forward to and then there's just so much else going on. You just don't get to them or they slip by the wayside. So I said I'd put these two on here so I'll remember them and remember to read them. Um, but the first one is actually uh, Mae Finchie, Scarlet Feather. Um, so I read my first Mae Finchie in March during our Irish Readathon at Circle of Friends and I just loved it so much. It was brilliant and I said I can't wait to read more Mae Finchie and here we are like nearly six months later and I haven't read any more. This one just sounds like it might be quite cosy about these two characters, Cathy and Tom, that have a catering company in Dublin and just about their lives and about their struggles and things. So um, yeah, I'm just expecting a cosy, good time, great characters, really, really funny if it's anything like Circle of Friends and such a quick read as well, Mae Finchie. And I suppose it is nice to have a contemporary on this list when all the rest of them are like classics or uh, historical fiction. So yeah, Mae Finchie will be my representative for that. So finally then, thinking back on this year, like, <laughs> It, this is probably a good thing. But I read many, many, many less books about ships uh, than I had in the previous two years. And a lot of that probably is down to booktube, you know, reminded me there was so many other great books in the world and also I just needed to diversify my reading a little bit. But I did miss it and especially reading non-fiction I suppose. I don't think I've read any non-fiction books about ships this year which is uh, strange for me. So I did find this book earlier this year and I was just uh, excited to read it and just haven't got to it yet and that's uh, Erebus the story of a ship by Michael Palin. Erebus what I know it for anyways is it's one of the ships that was lost in the John Franklin expedition to try and find the Northwest Passage but it takes the same slant as a book I read last year that I really enjoyed which which was Endeavour by Peter Moore. It takes the story of the ship from when it was built to all the way through to when it was like dismantled or in the case of Erebus lost and found in 2014. I just loved that kind of seeing how they modified it for the different purposes and just yeah sometimes these ships do hang around a lot and Erebus actually um I'd forgotten on its first voyage it went further south than any other ship that had gone before and then yeah obviously the doomed uh, Franklin expedition. I'm just looking forward to uh, getting stuck into some maritime history again. So that's it they're the eight books that I kind of want to prioritize to read at some stage in the rest of 2022. I'm sure I'll uh, read many more books as well hopefully but let me know if you've read any of these books what do you think of them what are you prioritizing for uh, the rest of 2022 especially if they're like longer or more adventurous reads have you read Ulysses and if you've made any videos or let would you let me know what you thought of it or any tips that you have for reading Ulysses I'd love to know so yeah thanks for listening thanks for watching and I'll see you next Thursday for my next video